welcome back to The Bible Explained. It's good to be back to engage in biblical discussion. Let me just say thank you to all of the subscribers and your continued support to this channel. I hope for peace, love, health, and prosperity to you all. Let us journey through the scriptures to uncover our position as New Testament believers when it comes to tithing and giving. We as New Testament believers are also considered to be under the umbrella of grace tithing. Tithing under grace and no longer under necessity or requirement. This message may be freeing for some listeners. It may be new information regarding tithing and giving under the law, before the law, and after the law, and how the New Testament views it. Some may not be ready to accept this message, and for some, it may be right on time, as this is a three-part series, and we not only expand on biblical tithing and giving, but the law as it applies in today's world system. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 11. Therefore, if perfection were through the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should arise according to the order of Melchizedek, and not be called according to the order of Aaron? The main focus of this verse is if perfection were through the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law. Some say that believers in Christ should not tithe, because tithing went out with the law. Tithing, however, did not originate in the law, but it was adopted into the law. As New Testament believers, we must understand, by way of the Levitical priesthood, is when the people received the law, we, as saints today, are under grace, and there is a difference. Leviticus chapter 27, verse 30 through verse 33. Now remember, Hebrews chapter 7, verse 11, stated, For under it the people received the law. So Leviticus chapter 27, verse 30 through 33, is a tithing verse found within the law and all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy to the Lord. If a man wants at all to redeem any of his tithes, he shall add one-fifth to it. And concerning the tithe of the herd or the flock, of whatever passes under the rod, the tenth one shall be holy to the Lord. He shall not inquire whether it is good or bad nor shall he exchange it. And if he exchanges it at all, then both it and the one exchanged for it shall be holy. It shall not be redeemed. Now the tenth mentioned here is the infamous 10% we are all familiar with among the church today. The scriptures also say that if a man wants to redeem his tithe, he must add one-fifth to it. The word redeem here in verse 33 is the Hebrew word ga'al, meaning to buy back your tithe. Now under the law, if a tithe was missed, restitution could be made, as we look at Leviticus chapter 5 verse 16, and he shall make restitution for the harm that he has done in regard to the holy thing, and shall add one-fifth to it and give it to the priest. So the priest shall make atonement for him with the ram of the trespass offering, and it shall be forgiven him. The book of Numbers, chapter 18, verse 21 through 32. Behold, I have given the children of Levi all the tithes in Israel as an inheritance in return for the work which they perform, the work of the tabernacle of meeting. Hereafter, the children of Israel shall not come near the tabernacle of meeting, lest they bear sin and die. But the Levites shall perform the work of the tabernacle of meeting. They shall bear their iniquity. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations, 
that among the children of Israel they shall have no inheritance. For the tithes of the children of Israel, which they offer up as a heave offering to the Lord, I have given to the Levites as an inheritance. Therefore I have said to them, Among the children of Israel they shall have no inheritance. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak thus to the Levites, and say to them, When you take from the children of Israel the tithes which I have given you from them as your inheritance, then you shall offer up a heave offering of it to the Lord, a tenth of the tithe. And your heave offering shall be reckoned to you as though it was the grain of the threshing floor and as the fullness of the winepress. Thus you shall also offer a heave offering to the Lord from all your tithes which you receive from the children of Israel, and you shall give the Lord's heave offering from it to Aaron the priest. Of all your gifts you shall offer up every heave offering due to the Lord, from all the best of them, the consecrated part of them. Therefore you shall say to them, When you have lifted up the best of it, then the rest shall be accounted to the Levites as the produce of the threshing floor and as the produce of the winepress. You may eat it in any place, you and your households, for it is your reward for the work of the tabernacle of meeting, and you shall bear no sin because of it, when you have lifted up the best of it. But you shall not profane the holy gifts of the children of Israel, lest you die. The children of Levi are the Levites of whom we get the Levitical priesthood. The church did not invent tithes. It is something that predates the age of the church. The practicing of tithes in Israel was for a specific group known as the Levites. The only work the Levites performed was the tabernacle of meeting, collecting all of the other 11 tribes of Israel's tenths of tithes, which would be their inheritance. And from this inheritance, the Levites were commanded to give a heave offering by taking a tenth of all the gathered tithes and pay that to the Lord as payment under the law. Notice in verse 31 that the Levites reward or inheritance can be eaten in any place, which means the gathering of the tenths was not monetary under the law. Deuteronomy chapter 12 verse 1 through verse 19. These are the statutes and judgments which you shall be careful to observe in the land which the Lord God of your fathers is giving you to possess all the days that you live on the earth. God is talking to Israel and Israel only. We must get an understanding of who God is speaking to in context. There are times where God is talking to Israel and there is a principle where it applies to those outside of Israel. Verse 2, you shall utterly destroy all the places where the nations which you shall dispose serve their gods, on the high mountains and on the hills and under every green tree. And you shall destroy their altars, break their sacred pillars, and burn their wooden images with fire. You shall cut down the carved images of their gods, and destroy their names from that place. God is very clear in not adopting pagan worship with the instruction he has given Israel. Verse 5 through 6 But you shall seek the place where the Lord your God chooses out of all your tribes to put his name for his dwelling place. And there you shall go. There you shall take your burnt offerings, your sacrifices, your tithes, the heave offerings of your hand, your vowed offerings, your free will offerings, and the firstborn of your herds and flocks. God gives a distinction between different types of offerings and tithes. Burnt offerings were required, sacrifices were required, your tithes were required, your heave offerings were required, your vowed offerings were required. The firstborn of your herds and flocks were required. Your free will offerings were not required, but out of the abundance of your heart. 
verse 7 through 12. And there you shall eat before the Lord your God, and you shall rejoice in all to which you have put your hand, you and your households, in which the Lord your God has blessed you. You shall not at all do as we are doing here today, every man doing whatever is right in his own eyes. For as yet you have not come to the rest and the inheritance which the Lord your God is giving you. But when you cross over the Jordan and dwell in the land which the Lord your God is giving you to inherit, and he gives you rest from all your enemies round about, so that you dwell in safety, then there will be the place where the Lord your God chooses to make his name abide. There you shall bring all that I command you, your burnt offerings, your sacrifices, your tithes, the heave offerings of your hand, and all your choice offerings, which you vow to the Lord. And you shall rejoice before the Lord your God, you and your sons and your daughters, your male and female servants, and the Levite who is within your gates, since he has no portion nor inheritance with you. This is why the Levites were chosen to perform the work of the tabernacle of meetings, because they had no portion or inheritance among the other tribes of Israel. Verse 13 through 19. Take heed to yourself that you do not offer your burnt offerings in every place that you see, but in the place which the Lord chooses, in one of your tribes. There you shall offer your burnt offerings, and there you shall do all that I command you. However, you may slaughter and eat meat within all your gates. Whatever your heart desires, according to the blessing of the Lord of your God, which he has given you, the unclean and the clean may eat of it, of the gazelle and the deer alike. Only you shall not eat the blood. You shall pour it on the earth like water. You may not eat within your gates the tithe of your grain, or your new wine, or your oil, of the firstborn of your herd, or your flock, or any of your offerings which you vow, of your freewill offerings, or of the heave offering of your hand. But you must eat them before the Lord your God, in the place which the Lord your God chooses, you and your son and your daughter your male servant, your female servant, and the Levite who is within your gates. And you shall rejoice before the Lord your God in all to which you put your hands. Take heed to yourself that you do not forsake the Levite as long as you live in your land. In summary, God has much to say about the Levites. Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 22 through verse 29. You shall truly tithe all the increase of your grain that the field produces year by year, and you shall eat before the Lord your God in the place where he chooses to make his name abide. The tithe of your grain and your new wine and your oil of the firstborn of your herds and your flocks, that you may learn to fear the Lord your God always. But if the journey is too long for you, so that you are not able to carry the tithe, or if the place where the Lord your God chooses to put his name is too far from you when the Lord your God has blessed you, then you shall exchange it for money. Take the money in your hand and go to the place which the Lord your God chooses, and you shall spend that money for whatever your heart desires, for oxen or sheep or wine or similar drink, for whatever your heart desires, you shall eat there before the Lord your God, and you shall rejoice, you and your household. You shall not forsake the Levite who is within your gates, for he has no part nor inheritance with you. At the end of every third year, you shall bring out the tithe of your produce of that year and store it up within your gates. Notice if the tithes of the grain was too heavy or burdensome during the Israelites' travels, the Israelites would convert it to money and then take that money to the place where the Lord chose. They would then exchange the money for sheep 
wine, oxen, or for whatever their heart desired, but it would not remain as money. This tithe is different from the tithe we read about in Numbers chapter 18. The first tithe in Numbers is the Levitical tithe for the Levites specifically, and this tithe in Deuteronomy chapter 14 is dealing with food known as the festival tithe. Verse 29, and the Levite, because he has no portion nor inheritance with you, and the stranger and the fatherless and the widow who are within your gates may come and eat and be satisfied, that the Lord your God may bless you in all the work of your hand which you do. In total, we have just read about three required tithes as payment under the law. The third tithe was to be given every three years. Israel would pay 20% in year one, 20% in year two, 30% in year three, 20% in year four, 20% in year five, 30% in year six, and so forward. Every year, they would give a third tithe, but every year, on a consistent basis, they were to give two tithes. Year one, two tithes, year two, two tithes, and year three, three tithes. 20%, 20%, and 30%, which is significantly more than the standard 10% many believers of the church today are accustomed to paying with a law mindset. Some believers even deny financial responsibilities just to pay the 10% out of fear to avoid a curse without realizing that Malachi is the same as Leviticus, scriptures written under the law, which we are no longer under per responsible handlings of grace. If we are going to do our best to bring in the 10% tithe into the storehouse, which the church is not a storehouse, it is a body of believers submitted unto God, as we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. But if we are going to do our best and bring in the 10%, we are still forgetting 13%. If we were to average the third tithe and break it into each year, it would be approximately 3.3%. Therefore, averaging the three tithes would equate to 23.3% that Israel paid each year as a law requirement. Deuteronomy chapter 26, verse 1 through 12. And it shall be when you come into the land which the Lord God is giving you as an inheritance and you possess it and dwell in it, that you shall take some of the first of all the produce of the ground, which you shall bring from your land that the Lord your God is giving you, and put it in a basket, and go to the place where the Lord your God chooses to make his name abide. And you shall go to the one who is priest in those days, and say to him, I declare today to the Lord your God that I have come to the country which the Lord swore to our fathers to give. Then the priest shall take the basket out of your hand and set it down before the altar of the Lord your God. And you shall answer and say before the Lord your God, My father was a Syrian about to perish, and he went down to Egypt and dwelt there, few in number. And there he became a nation, great, mighty, and populous. But the Egyptians mistreated us, afflicted us, and laid hard bondage on us. Then we cried out to the Lord God of our fathers, and the Lord heard our voice, and looked on our affliction, and our labor, and our oppression. So the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand, and with an outstretched arm, with great terror, and with signs and wonders. He has brought us to this place and has given us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And now, behold, I have brought the first fruits of the land which you, O Lord, have given me. Then you shall set it before the Lord your God and worship before the Lord your God. So you shall rejoice in every good thing which the Lord your God has given to you and your house, you and the Levite and the stranger who is among you. When you have finished laying aside all the tithe of your increase in the third year, the year of tithing, 
and have given it to the Levite, the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, so that they may eat within your gates and be filled. Notice how the three tithes are displayed here. In the 12th verse, the third tithe is highlighted given every three years, which is referred to as the year of tithing. The third tithe was specifically for the Levite, the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow. The second tithe in Deuteronomy chapter 14 is known as the festival tithe that could be exchanged for money. But once the Israelites arrived at the location God has chosen, the money would be tendered for something of which they desire to be eaten. The first tithe in Leviticus chapter 27 and Numbers chapter 14 is directed to the Levites. Three tithes under the law, one for the Levites yearly, one for the sanctuary or festival yearly, and the third for those in need or those that are hurting every three years. Second Chronicles chapter 31, verse five through verse 21. As soon as the commandment was circulated, the children of Israel brought in abundance the first fruits of grain and wine, oil, and honey, and all of the produce of the field. And they brought in abundantly the tithe of everything. And the children of Israel and Judah, who dwelt in the cities of Judah, brought the tithe of oxen and sheep, also the tithe of holy things, which were consecrated to the Lord their God, they laid in heaps. In the third month, they began laying them in heaps, and they finished in the seventh month. And when Hezekiah and the leaders came and saw the heaps, they blessed the Lord and his people Israel. Then Hezekiah questioned the priest and the Levites concerning the heaps. And Azariah, the chief priest from the house of Zodok, answered him and said, Since the people began to bring the offerings into the house of the Lord, we have had enough to eat and have plenty left. For the Lord has blessed his people, and what is left is this great abundance. Now Hezekiah commanded them to prepare rooms in the house of the Lord, and they prepared them. Then they faithfully brought in the offerings, the tithes, and the dedicated things. Conaniah the Levite had charge of them, and Shemi, his brother, was the next. Jehiel, Azaziah, Nahath, Azahel, Jeremoth, Josabad, Elia, Ishmachiah, Mahath, and Benaiah were overseers under the hand of Conaniah and Shemi, his brother, at the commandment of Hezekiah the king, and Azariah, the ruler of the house of God, Kor, the son of Imna, the Levite, the keeper of the east gate, was over the freewill offerings to God, to distribute the offerings of the Lord and the most holy things. And under him were Eden, Maniamin, Jeshua, Shemaiah, Amariah, and Shechaniah, his faithful assistants in the cities of the priest, to distribute allotments to their brethren by divisions, to the great as well as the small, besides those males from three years old and up who were written in the genealogy. They distributed to everyone who entered the house of the Lord his daily portion for the work of his service by his division, and to the priests who were written in the genealogy according to their father's house, and to the Levites for twenty years old and up according to their work by their divisions, and to all who were written in the genealogy, their little ones and their wives, their sons and daughters, the whole company of them, for in their faithfulness they sanctified themselves in holiness. Also, for the sons of Aaron, the priest, who were in the fields of the common lands of their cities, in every single city, there were men who were designated by name to distribute portions to all the males among the priests and to all who were listed by genealogies among the Levites. Thus, Hezekiah did throughout all Judah, and he did what was good and right and true before the Lord his God, and in every work that he began in the service of the house of God, in the law and in the commandment to seek his God, he did it with all his heart, so he prospered. It's interesting to point out now 
that tithing was never mentioned by our apostles, nothing mentioned in the epistles, or ever mentioned by those who wrote the New Testament, we find less than nothing as we journey through the book of Acts, which is the beginning of the age of the church. The only time tithing is mentioned in the New Testament is by an unknown writer who wrote the book of Hebrews. And the only thing that writer mentions about tithing has to do with Abram and the priest of Salem, known as Melchizedek. The writer of Hebrews describes an event before the law was established with a post-law context as Christ fulfilled the law. In that context, Abram gave a tent to Melchizedek when there was no requirement or obligation to do so. He didn't pay a tenth, he gave a tenth, which we will discuss in Hebrews in part two of this series. Nehemiah chapter 10, verse 35 through verse 39. And we made ordinances to bring the first fruits of our ground and the first fruits of all fruit of all trees year by year to the house of the Lord to bring the firstborn of our sons and our cattle as it is written in the law and the firstborn of our herds and our flocks to the house of God to the priest who minister in the house of God. It has been wrongly translated that the people of the church bring their tithes specifically to and for the one who preaches or teaches the people of the house of the Lord. This does not translate intelligently because if we ask the question, who is the house of God with Christ being its cornerstone? Or what is the house of the Lord? Or who is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Well, that would be you and me, the believer, the church, the bride of Christ. The book of Malachi, chapter 3 verse 7 through verse 14 yet from the days of your fathers you have gone away from my ordinances and you have not kept them return to me and i will return to you says the lord of hosts but you said in what way shall we return will a man rob god yet you have robbed me but you say in what way have we robbed you in tithes and offerings you are cursed with the curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessings, that there will not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts, and all nations will call you blessed, for you will be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. Your words have been harsh against me, says the Lord, yet you say, what have we spoken against you? You have said it is useless to serve God. What profit is it that we have kept his ordinance and that we have walked as mourners before the Lord of hosts. The question is asked in verse eight, will a man rob God? And the answer in return, in what way have we robbed you? And God answers in tithes and offerings. You are cursed with the curse for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse if we think back to 2 Chronicles, we see whose responsibility it was to bring all the tithes into the storehouse. It was the Levites. Therefore, God is specifically speaking to the Levites, present tense, and not you and I, future tense. Although there is a principle that you and I can gather from this, notice a series of patterns. Verse 10, that there may be food in my house and try me now in this says the Lord of hosts. Looking at verse seven, God states, yet from the days of your fathers, you have gone away from my ordinances and have not yet kept them. Return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. But you said, in what way shall we return? Verse eight, God asks, will a man rob God? And the Levites answer, how have we robbed you? And in verse 13, 
God asks, Your words have been harsh against me, says the Lord. Yet you say, What have we spoken against you? Now looking at the previous chapter, Malachi chapter 2, verse 17, You have wearied the Lord with your words. Yet you say, In what way have we wearied him? These are four questions and observations with four answers in like manner. God is asking the storehouse keepers, the Levites, one, will a man rob God? Two, your words have been harsh against me. Three, you have gone away from my ordinances. And four, you have wearied the Lord. The Levites respond in a pattern of their own. One, how have we robbed you? Two, in what way have we spoken against you? Three, in what way shall we return to you? And four, in what way have we wearied you? To further confirm who God is speaking to, we look at Malachi chapter 2 verse 1. And now, O priest, this commandment is for you. It is clear that God is speaking to the Levites, the children of Levi only, and God is looking for a confession, as this is a matter of the heart, very similar to the questions God asked Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden in Genesis chapter 3, verse 9 through 13. Where are you? Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? What is this you have done? God asked the woman. God, in his omniscience and infinite knowledge, already possessed the answers to his questions. He simply is looking for a confession that Adam and Eve would give to each other, confessing their transgressions. And it is the same thing here with the storehouse keepers, the children of Levi. Regarding tithing under the law, from the time the Ten Commandments were given in Exodus, throughout the law of Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, and the remainder of the Old Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, is all law, until the finished work of Christ fulfilling the law. As long as tithing was present, it was never money. Tithing was not an obligation until it was adopted into the law. It was not a requirement until it was included in the law. It was not a payment until it was included in the law. It was not a debt to be paid until it was included in the law. The law required more than one tithe, but three, totaling approximately 23.3%. A regular tithe for the Levites, a festival tithe to be eaten, and a tithe given every three years for the poor. Tithing under the law was not a republic or democracy. It was known as a theocracy, solely governed by God. Therefore, tithes doubled as taxes for national Israel. God was the overseeing president, and the Levites were the government.